Once there lived a family not too far out from where we all lived. The Darling family. The Darling family had three children. Their names were Jan, Michael and Wendy. Wendy would always tell her mum how Peter Pan would always play the flute in her room. Her mother would always tell her that she was imagining things, but couldn't help but notice the leaves in the room, which always confused her a bit. Wendy would always say that the leaves fall off Peter Pan. One night, when their parents went out for the night, the kids were left home all alone, and when they got sleepy, they all went to sleep. Peter Pan silently entered their room and started looking for the leaves he had left behind. At that moment, Wendy woke up. Peter Pan, I was waiting for you. Nobody would believe that you're real. Wendy gave back the leaves she had been hiding for Peter. She really liked Peter, and so they sewed his leaves back on his clothing. Wendy, would you like me to tell you an amazing adventure story? I don't want to hear about an adventure. I want to live one, Peter Pan. Right at that moment, Peter's small fairy friend, Tinkerbell, entered through the window. Well, of course. I knew you'd be here. Are you getting ready for a new adventure without me? You know it's not possible for me to do anything without you. Wendy woke her siblings up. The siblings looked at Peter Pan and Tinkerbell with great confusion. Well, are you ready to fly? Tinkerbell scattered her fairy dust and off they went floating into thin air. And all together they left the house. The kids headed towards Neverland at once. After a long journey, they arrived at Neverland, and there they were. The mermaids, wild animals, Indians, pirates, and the lost boys were there too. Amongst them all was the most dangerous of them called Captain Hook. Captain Hook was Peter Pan's enemy. The reason for this was because when they were fighting, Peter cut his arm and a huge crocodile ate it. Along with his arm, he also swallowed his watch and because of this, the crocodile would always make a tick-tock noise. And so Captain Hook would always know if the crocodile was near from the noise. When looking around with his binoculars on the deck, Captain Hook spotted Peter Pan and kids looking at him from the top of a hill. He immediately ordered the men to fire the cannons. It was very hard for Peter Pan and the kids to get away from the cannons. Tinkerbell, you take the kids to a safe place. I will deal with Hook. Tinkerbell was very jealous of Wendy, so she wanted to keep her away from Peter Pan. With some made-up excuse, she left Wendy back on the hill and brought Jan and Michael to a safe place down at the beach. The lost boys who lived on the island saw Wendy from afar, and thinking that she was an enemy, they wounded her. At the same time, Peter Pan was fighting with Captain Hawk. But seeing the crocodile that got his arm suddenly reappearing, Hook ran away in fear. Ah! Whilst Peter Pan was coming back, he saw Wendy lying on the rocks wounded, and he was very upset. And the lost boys were very sorry when they realised that the girl that they had wounded was Peter Pan's friend. I have left the kids in your care. Tinkerbell was so sorry. She also realised that what she did was wrong. I am so sorry, Peter. This will never happen again, I promise. Lost Boys made a beautiful home for Wendy and her brothers. 
At night, they all would sleep in the house underneath the trees, listening to Wendy's stories. And Peter Pan would keep guard in front of the house. One day, when they were resting on the rocks, they spotted the pirates approaching. The pirates took the Indian chief's daughter hostage. Peter Pan and the boys went after to save the chief's daughter. And there was a big battle between them and the pirates. In the end, they saved his daughter and brought her to the chief. After that day, the Indians, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys became very close friends. In fact, the chief ordered two of his best men in Peter Pan's command to guard the boys. Of course, Captain Hook was furious about this. One day I will beat you, Peter Pan, and you will not be able to get away. One night, when Wendy started to tell the story of her family, Peter realized how much she and her brothers missed their home. So he told them that they could go back if they wanted to, but that he wanted to stay. When they all were packing up for their long journey, they were attacked by the pirates. The pirates caught the boys after they set up a trap to the Indians and captured them. Peter Pan was sleeping at home not knowing all that happened to the boys. Captain Hook saw him sleeping. But he could not open the door to Peter Pan's treehouse. Still, he poured the poison in the bottle he was carrying under the door, causing Peter Pan to sleep for hours. Peter Pan slept one whole day, and when he woke up, Tinkerbell entered. After she told him all that had happened, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell went out to rescue the boys. When they arrived to the Happy Rock, the pirates' headquarters, they saw that there was no pirate on guard. And when they went over to the other side of the rock, they were shocked from what they saw. Wendy, Jan and Michael and the last boys were all tied up to the poles and Captain Hawk was holding a torch in flames. Say your last words. <laughs> As their eldest, Wendy began to talk. Dear friends, my last words to you will be the words your real mothers would have told you. If they were here, they would have told you not to be afraid and be courageous to face your death. Don't be afraid. Kindness always wins. Always. Captain Hook got very angry with Wendy's words, so he brought her to the boat and tied her to the big pole. At this moment, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell reached out to save the boys. At the same time, the Indians and their chief came to help. This made Peter Pan so happy, because with their help, they rescued the boys. It was now time to get Wendy. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys got on Captain Hook's ship, where only a few pirates remained. And when they realised that they would be beaten, they jumped off the ship. There's nowhere to hide, Hook. Surrender! Peter Pan and the Lost Boys started to charge towards Captain Hook, pushing him to walk backwards. And suddenly, he heard the noise, the one noise that he was most afraid of. When Captain Hook looked back in fear, he saw the croc waiting for him to fall down into the water. Help! In a flash, he ran to the other side of the boat, jumped and started to swim as fast as he could. Peter Pan and the Lost Boys began to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> From that moment on, Hook's ship belonged to the Lost Boys and their captain was Peter Pan. The crew is ready for your orders, Captain Peter. Sail away! 
The boys untied the ropes and the sails blew up with all their might. Tinkerbell, fly us away to the home of the Darling family. The kids were very happy to hear this. Wendy, Jan and Michael were going to reunite with their parents. They had dearly missed. When Tinkerbell sprinkled the fairy dust, suddenly the ship was airborne and started to fly in the sky. Wendy was restless to get home and tell her parents all about Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and the Neverland. From that day on, Neverland was going to be their second home and Peter Pan their best friend. Once upon a time, they lived three piglets with their mother in a small house. It was time for them to leave their home and learn to live on their own. Their mother called the three piglets next to her. My dear children, the time has come for you to go out into the world. Go and start your new lives. But don't ever forget, whatever you do in this world, do the best you can. This is the only and the best way to stay alive. A little sad with a bit of excitement, the three little piglets said their goodbyes to their mummy and were on their way. After a while, they found some piece of land where they could build their own home. The youngest piglet was determined to build his home with straw. He thought this was the easiest and the fastest way to build a home. That way, he had heaps of time to play. The youngest of them all finished his house in one day. He yelled out to the other piglets. Hey, you guys, I'm already finished! The eldest piglet had a look at the house. Mm, OK, but this house doesn't look steady at all. How will we protect ourselves from the wolf? The youngest piglet didn't take any notice of his brother. Don't worry, nothing will happen. OK, don't say I didn't warn you. The middle piglet decided to make his house out of wood. From the branches he had collected in the woods, he decided to build a little cubby house. His house took exactly three days to finish. This house was a bit more steady than the one with straw. The eldest piglet walked over towards him. Uh, my dear brother, you've done a great job, but this doesn't look safe at all. Is this house going to protect us from the wolf? The middle piglet answered. Don't worry, this house is very safe. Okay. Don't say I didn't warn you! While the two little piglets were having a great time in their newly built homes, the eldest of them all was constantly working because he was building a home from bricks and rocks. The other piglets thought that his effort was useless. All they did was play around and kill time. Why would you bother with this when you can quickly finish like we have? Hey, how scared is he? The eldest piglet didn't bother listening to them. He worked for one whole week and managed to finish his house made out of bricks and rocks. A day later, a hungry wolf arrived near their home. He first stood in front of the house made of straw. The little piglet was resting in his house made of straw. The wolf knocked on the door. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. And so the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew his house in. But with great effort, the little piglet managed to get away. And off he ran over to his brother's house made from tree branches. He knocked on the door and when the middle piglet opened the door, the little piglet threw himself inside the house. Hey, close the door, the wolf can come in here. Don't worry, he can't do anything to us in this house. 
After a while, the wolf came by the second piglet's wooden house and yelled inside. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't blow my house in. And so the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew his house in and brought it down. Both piglets ran to the third piglet's house and barely got away from the wolf. Brother, the wolf is going this way. What are we going to do? The oldest piglet answered, very sure of himself. Uh, don't worry, uh, the wolf cannot come in this house. A little later, the starving wolf came by the third piglet's house of bricks and stone and yelled to the three piglets. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. Don't you even try, you bad wolf. You cannot come in this house. The wolf got very angry. He huffed and puffed, but nothing happened. He could not bring his house down. He tried and tried, but he couldn't move one single brick. Finally, being exhausted, the wolf decided to try another way to go in. He saw the chimney up on the roof and started to climb. Realising that the wolf was going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney, the piglet quickly lit up the fireplace right under the chimney and put a big bucket of water on the woods. The wolf barely climbed up the chimney and threw himself in and went straight into the boiling bucket. Oh, help! Help, I'm burning! Save me! Oh, help! Finally, being free from the wolf, the piglets hugged each other with joy. The three piglets went to their mother's house the next day to tell her all that had happened. The youngest one came next to his mother. You were right, Mummy. Whatever we did in this world, we have done it to our best. If you really work for something, it will be a success. From that day on, the two piglets were never lazy. They worked hard like their big brother and lived a happy and safe life. Once upon a time, Right on the edge of the forest lived a golden-haired girl. This golden-yellow-haired girl's name was Goldilocks. She had such amazing and admirable locks that everyone who saw her was mesmerized. But despite her sweetness, at times she could be a rather naughty little girl. Every time she stepped out to play, her mother would have to warn her to behave. Darling, please stay in the backyard and don't go into the woods. Deep into the forest in a shack lived a bear family. A broad-shouldered papa bear, a medium-sized mama bear and a baby bear. Mama Bear always woke up early to prepare oatmeal porridge for breakfast. One morning, Baby Bear woke up earlier than usual and wanted to eat his porridge. But it was too hot. Mama, can we go out for a walk in the woods until our porridge cools down? Mama, Papa and Baby Bear left their porridges on the table and went out for a walk. The same morning, Goldilocks was playing in the backyard while waiting for her mum to prepare breakfast. But she was so bored of playing in the same yard all the time, and she was very curious about the deep parts of the forest. What would happen if I just went for a walk? She looked around, seeing that no one was around, she began running into the forest. When she got tired, she stopped and looked around. What a beautiful forest! Flowers, trees... Why didn't I come here before? 
she began to walk deeper into the forest. In the meantime, walking around with his family, the baby bear saw a beehive on the branch of a tree. Such a big beehive! I'm sure it is full of honey! Papa, can we eat some honey? No, my boy. That belongs to the bees. It's their home. We can't go in anybody's home and eat their food. It's not right. You're right. I think I will have to wait until we go home for my breakfast. Meanwhile, Goldilocks walked all by herself for such a long time. Finally, she got lost. She tried to turn back but could not make out the right way. She got really tired and hungry. She was almost in tears of her tiredness. She walked a little more and finally she came to the end of the road. And she came across the house of the bear family in between the trees. She quietly approached the house, walked around it, but she could not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Then she looked through the window. She saw three hot steamy plates on the table. She went back to the door again, and this time she knocked hard. The door opened. Goldilocks was overjoyed. She looked in and yelled. Anybody home? When there was no answer, she entered. She approached the table. On the table there were three bowls of porridge. One big, one medium sized and one small. Because she was so hungry, she wanted to eat the big one first. But the moment she put the spoon in her mouth, whew, her mouth burned because the porridge was still too hot. She immediately reached the medium bowl, but she did not want to eat this either because it was too cold. It's too cold! Finally, she dipped her spoon into the smallest one. Hmm, this porridge is neither cold nor too hot. It's exactly the way I want it. So she ate all the porridge in the smallest bowl. When she was done with her breakfast and felt full, she wanted to sit on one of the three chairs in front of the chimney to rest for a while. One of the three chairs was a big one, the other one medium, and the last one was a small one. First she tried to sit on the big one, but she couldn't even climb on it. She tried the medium one, but this one was very hard. It was very uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest one. This one was very comfortable and exactly her size. But suddenly, the chair broke into pieces with a very loud noise. Goldilocks found herself on the floor and she did not know what to do. She walked through to the next door and here there were three beds. A big, a medium sized and a small one. First she tried the big bed. This one was too big for her and also too hard. Second one was a little bigger than her size but also too soft. So she lied down on the third and smallest bed. This one was exactly her size and it was very comfortable. So comfortable that Goldilocks fell asleep right away. Whilst Goldilocks was sleeping, the bear family came back home. Papa Bear had some wood with him that he collected for the chimney. Mama Bear had fresh berries and Baby Bear just could not wait to have his porridge. When they arrived home, they went straight to the table. Papa Bear had a look at his bowl and was so angry. Somebody tasted my porridge. Mama Bear also looked at her bowl. Somebody also tasted my porridge. And when Baby Bear looked at his bowl, he began to cry. <laughs> 
if that somebody also tasted my oatmeal porridge, not only tasted it, also ate it all. <laughs> they got up and started to look around. Papa Bear noticed his chair in front of the chimney. Somebody sat on my chair. Look, it's on a different spot. And then it was Mama Bear's turn to complain. Somebody also sat on my chair. And just like before, the baby bear began to cry again. <laughs> Somebody also sat on my chair, but broke it too. <laughs> the bear family curiously went to the bedroom. Somebody lied on my bed. Look how it's undone. Somebody lied on mine too. Somebody lied on my bed too. Then is still sleeping in it. <laughs> Papa Bear walked next to Baby Bear's bed and saw that someone really was sleeping in his bed. Slowly lifted up the blankets and they were really surprised to see a little girl sleeping in the bed. What is a little girl doing in our house? <laughs> Tell this little girl to get out of my bed now! <laughs> Waking up to baby bears crying, Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her and she ran out of the room in great fear. She went out of the house and started running without looking back. She got breathless from running, but she did not stop and she didn't even know which way to go. Right at that moment, she saw her parents coming across from the forest. When she didn't end up going back home, they went out looking for her. Goldilocks was very happy to see her parents. She ran and hugged her mother. <laughs> oh, mummy! We were so worried. Are you okay? From now on, I will always listen to you. I will never leave without letting you know. <laughs> Goldilocks hugged her parents really tight. From that day on, as she promised, she always listened to her parents and did nothing without having their permission. She was a well-behaved and kind girl forever. One day, a smart rabbit was going to enter her house in the forest, and she heard a terrible sound from inside her home. <clears throat> I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me. The rabbit was very scared by what she heard, so she ran away from her house right away. And after a while, she came across a fox. Hey, Fox, someone has taken over my house in the forest. Could you persuade him to leave? Of course, Rabbit Sister. The rabbit and the fox went to the rabbit's house. The very confident fox shouted into the cave. Hey, you, how dare you break into my friend's house? I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me. The fox did not expect such a bold proclamation and was so afraid he didn't know what to do. Uh, so, um, sorry, rabbit sister. Uh, uh, I, I could never win against someone who tramples an elephant. When the fox ran away, the rabbit got even more scared. She started wandering sadly among the trees and finally came across a rhino. Hey, rhino, someone I don't know broke into my house in the forest and I can't get him out. Can you help me? Of course I will. Come, bring me to your home. The rabbit brought the rhino in front of her house. Hey, you, how dare you break into my friend's house? Come out and show yourself. I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. 
I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me! But the rhino was scared too and didn't know what to do. Ha, huh, well, uh, Bunny, I just remembered I have a, um, a dentist appointment. Uh, very important. I had forgotten. I gotta go now. Bye-bye. When even the big rhino couldn't help the rabbit, the cute rabbit hit the road again. And this time, she came across an elephant. Hey, elephant, I am so desperate. Only you can help me. Please get this stranger out of my house. Don't worry, cute little rabbit. I'll help you. Let's go. The rabbit brought the elephant in front of her house. Hey, you! How dare you break into my friend's house? Get out now! I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me! The elephant was so scared that even her trunk trembled. Dear rabbit, I'm sorry, but I don't want anyone to crush me. The elephant left the rabbit and went back to her house. At that time, a small frog was passing by the rabbit. Hey frog, no animal in that forest could help me. Please bring out the stranger who broke into my house. Uh, of course, rabbit sister. Show me your house. The rabbit showed the frog her house. Hey, you! If you don't come out of my friend's house now, I'll come drag you out. Ahem, <clears throat> uh, don't come close. I am the invincible warrior who has to, uh, take, who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me. <laughs> now listen to me carefully. I'm a frog with sticky feet, and I'll jump right on your head and annoy you for days. Ah, uh, don't, don't you dare. Uh, please, uh, stay away. Well then get out now. Hearing the brave cry of the frog and the rabbit's unwanted guest inside, the other animals immediately gathered to see who the mighty warrior was. Come on! How long are you gonna make me wait? I'll count to three. One, two... Uh, okay, okay, I'm out, I'm here. Everyone looked around, but saw no one. Where are you? No more tricks. <laughs> right here. I'm standing at your feet. <laughs> it's me, centipede. All the animals started laughing when they saw the centipede. <laughs> the people of the forest laughed a lot that such a powerful voice came from a tiny centipede. <laughs> but they always believed that some people in this forest can have very surprising powers. I am the Invincible Warrior! <laughs> Gulliver's Travels Once upon a time, there lived a doctor named Gulliver. There came a time when there was no work to be found in the city. So Gulliver found a job on a ship. This way, his new life had begun on shore. The first few days, it went pretty good. He was getting used to his new life on the ship. But one day, a very strong thunder struck. After struggling in the huge waves for some hours, in the end, the ship tipped over. Gulliver and a few of the crew managed to get some rowing boats on the boat before it sank. Short while after their ship sank, it disappeared. They couldn't stay on this rowing boat for too long and soon after a strong wave hit them and this boat, like the ship, also tipped over. They scattered all over the place. For hours Gulliver struggled to stay above the water. He was trying to stay alive. In the end, the current helped him manage to hit ashore. He was very tired now. 
he had no idea as to where he was. Besides, he was in no state to think. He fainted right there on the shore. When he woke up, he noticed he had been tied up from head to toe. Surrounding him, he saw little tiny people as small as his palm. With amazement, Gulliver was staring at these little people. And with the same reaction, the little people were staring at him. Right at that moment, Gulliver felt a tingle all over his body. When he put his head up to see what it could be, he noticed his whole body covered in tiny arrows. The very frightened little people were throwing arrows at him. Please stop, don't! I won't hurt you, don't worry! For a few days, they kept him there with his hands and feet tied up. They gave him food and water. After some days had passed, they tied him on a car that was pulled by hundreds of tiny little horses, taking him to their hometown. This little town was called Lilliput. They saved the largest building in the town for him. But even so, to get inside the house, he had to crawl. Seeing that Gulliver meant no harm to them, they decided to introduce him to their king. Gulliver approached Lilliput's king. The king allowed him to stay. But in order to stay, he told him that he must work and help around the city as much as he could. Gulliver signed a piece of paper that stated the do's and don'ts. For example, if he wanted to pick someone up with his hands, he needed to have permission. Under these circumstances, Gulliver began living in Lilliput. He was helping with the renovations of the buildings and carrying water to the locals. After some days had gone by, he found out a big problem amongst the little people. The neighbouring country's army wanted to occupy Lilliput. In order to do so, they were getting ready for war. Gulliver went over to the king and proposed to help. If you like, I can help you out, your highness. The king was happy. He first thanked him, then accepted his offer. At that time, the neighbouring country's ships had finished their preparations. They were waiting for their order to proceed. This news got all the town worried. On the other hand, for Gulliver, it was too easy. He asked everyone to find as much wire as they could and bring it to him. Gulliver joined all the wire they bring to him and made a very long and strong piece of string. When it was midnight, he got the long string of wire and crossed to the other side of shore. Without being seen to the enemy, he managed to get to the port on the other side. He tied all the ships to one another and with the very few soldiers that were inside, he pulled them to Lilliput's shore. The people waiting for him at the port were super happy. They had imprisoned the enemy's soldiers. They now had no reason to be scared of the enemy. The king thanked Gulliver and rewarded him. Gulliver was very happy he had gained the king's trust. A while later, there was a fire in the castle. The moment he heard about the fire, Gulliver took one of the ships in the harbour, filled it with water and poured it on the castle, putting off the fire immediately. Gulliver and the king were getting along very well. Before making a decision, the king was always asking Gulliver first. Of course, this started to get in the way of the other advisers to the king. They were envious of Gulliver. Your Highness, we hear rumours. Gulliver is planning to get stronger and take your position as the king of Lilliput. Really? Yes, my king. 
We all know how strong he is. We can't defend ourselves if he attacks us. Mm. We can't live in fear like this. Public is also on its toes. The king was well affected by his advisors, and he decided to punish Gulliver. Considering the good he's done before, I won't give him the death penalty. His eyes will be blinded, he will be forbidden to go into town, and his food will be limited. When he heard about the king's decision, one of the workers in the castle who loved Gulliver ran right next to Gulliver to tell him all about it. I can talk to the king and change his mind. But the decision was made, and the king had no intentions to change his mind. Gulliver finally understood that his only option was to leave. At night, taking the enemy ships in the harbour with him, he began to move towards the island across. He walked and swam and finally came to the island of what people called the enemy. When Gulliver returned their ships, they understood that he didn't have bad intentions. With the guide next to him, they sent Gulliver to meet with the king. The king properly welcomed Gulliver, and Gulliver told him all that had happened. The king told him that he could stay as long as he wanted. Gulliver was really surprised of this kind gesture after he stole their ships, because he hadn't seen this kind of behaviour in Lilliput. Gulliver was staying out at night, since there was no house big enough for him. People of Lilliput think this kingdom is the enemy, but actually they are all good people. One day, when he was walking about, he found a rowing boat. This was clearly the boat that they were on after his ship had sunk. Apparently our boat hit the shore on this island. He immediately went to the king. The king gave him all the men he needed. They all began to repair the boat. In a few days, the boat was ready for shore. Gulliver was very happy because he could leave the kingdom of the little people and go home. He thanked the king and his people who welcomed him. But a tough journey was waiting for him on this small boat in the big ocean. <sighs> Even the small stone will sing my boat. <laughs> After a couple of days on the ocean, he came across a ship. He began yelling for help. Hey! Here! Help me! Finally, they heard him. They came next to the rowing boat and took Gulliver on their ship. And so Gulliver was safe. He was anxious to tell about all that had happened. The little people, the kingdom of Lilliput, and the kings of the two kingdoms. He wondered who would believe him about all that had happened? Gulliver felt very happy that he was going to go home to see his family. But he also felt there were many more adventures waiting for him out there in the big ocean. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl named Dorothy. Dorothy lived in a farmhouse with her auntie and uncle, M and Henry. On that day, Dorothy didn't even want to play with her dog. It was as if she felt something bad was going to happen. A hurricane is coming our way. We must hide in the basement. And so auntie M yelled out, Come here this instant, Dorothy. Toto, come here. We must go down to the basement. Dorothy had to go under the bed to get her dog. Right at that moment, the farmhouse began to shake severely. 
Then the farmhouse began to spin around in its spot. The little girl was trying to hold on to something and at the same time she was trying to catch her dog. And she was about to fly out of the door. She managed to catch her dog. She wasn't able to see nothing, just the skies and clouds. Right at that moment, she knew she was way up into the sky. The house and her head were spinning so fast that she was so sleepy, she was numb to all that was happening around her. And so she fell asleep. Dorothy woke up with a big bang. The bed jumped up so high that it made the little girl fall out of the bed and onto the ground. She then realised that the farmhouse wasn't turning anymore. The sun was shining through the window, which made her realise she was on land. She ran outside. She couldn't believe the scenery. Her jaw dropped. There were fields of flowers as far as the eye could see. Then suddenly, Dorothy saw little men running towards her. The men had cone-shaped hats and the little bells on top of their hats were ringing. Also, their uniforms were blue and they all had very long beards. When the little men came next to Dorothy, there appeared a tiny lady with a white dress. The mightiest magician, welcome! I'm the good-hearted witch of the north and these are my friends the dwarfs. I want to thank you for getting rid of the Wicked Witch of the East and saving us. Um, thank you, but you must have confused me with somebody else. The good-hearted witch from the north marked a spot for Dorothy on the farmhouse. On the ground were a pair of shiny silver-shoed legs. Dorothy realised that the farmhouse landed on the Wicked Witch. Um. I, I didn't mean to do it. It really wasn't my fault. Uh, what will I do now? Only thing you can do is just accept the silver magic shoes of the Wicked Witch as a gift. Dorothy took her old shoes off and wore the new ones. Will you help me return back home? There's only one person who can help you and that is the Wizard of Oz. By following the Yellow Brick Road, you will arrive at Emerald City, and once you arrive, you will have to get permission to go up and see the Wizard of Oz. Straight after talking to Dorothy, the good-hearted witch disappeared. The dwarfs sent Dorothy off and went on their way. After some time had passed away, the little girl and her dog needed to rest, so they stopped by a cornfield. In the middle of the field, Dorothy noticed a scarecrow. With great curiosity, she went next to him. Hi, who are you? At first, Dorothy was shocked, but then began explaining all that had happened. I don't know anything. My head is full of hay. I wonder if I come to Emerald City with you, do you think the Wizard of Oz would give me a brain? Dorothy took the scarecrow down from its frame and together they began to walk on the yellow brick road. A few hours later, as they passed through the forest and amongst the trees, they saw something shining. Once they had arrived next to it, they realised it was a man made out of tin. The tin man was standing still. Please help me. Because I have rusted, I have not been able to make a simple move for a very long time. How can we help you? Over there, you can find my shack. Please go over there and get my oil tin and rub it on my joints. Dorothy did as the tin man told her to do. She poured oil on all his joints and he began to move again. Thank you so much. And what are you guys doing here? Dorothy began to explain what had happened all over again. Do you think he could give me a heart? And so the Tin Man followed them. The forest began to get dark. And suddenly they heard a horrific roar. And out jumped out a lion in front of them. But when Toto 
began to bark, the lion took a step back in fear and began to shiver. How can a big lion like you be afraid of such a small dog? I know, I'm a coward. Even the slightest noise can scare me. <laughs> Wait, don't cry. Tell you what, we're looking for the Wizard of Oz. We all will ask for something from him. Maybe he can give you courage. The lion wiped away his tears and joyfully agreed to go to Emerald City with them. They walked for a while. The scarecrow showed them the sky shining green. The Emerald City wasn't so far now. Soon later, after a couple of hours of walking, they had reached the gates of the Emerald City. We have come here to see the Wizard of Oz. To enter the castle, they had to wear giant glasses because they could be blinded by the Emerald City's shiny green lights. The houses, streets, even the clothes of the people were all green in the Emerald City. Everywhere was shimmering. Finally, they had reached the castle. To see the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy was the first one to enter. The little girl entered hesitating, and she saw a big head hanging from the ceiling above the throne. I am the mighty and scary Oz. And who are you? Why did you want to see me? And where did you find those silver shoes? My name is Dorothy. I have come to ask for help. Dorothy told everything that had happened to mighty Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz said that he would help her. But in return, she had to get rid of the Wicked Witch of the West. With great frustration, Dorothy returned to her friends crying, and she told them what the Wizard of Oz had asked of her. They all decided to find the Wicked Witch of the West and get rid of her. The next morning, they left the Emerald City and started their journey to the castle of the Wicked Witch of the West. The Wicked Witch of the West had only one eye, but she could see really far. When she saw that Dorothy and her friends were approaching her castle, she called out her giant bees. Sting bees intruders! Dorothy and her friends saw the bees flying towards them. They did not have time to run away. Scarecrow, cover Dorothy, Toto and the lion with your hay so that the bees cannot sting them. When the Scarecrow covered the others with his hay, the bees all tried to sting the Tin Man. But of course, all lost their stingers and one by one they fell on the ground. This time, the witch sent her flying monkeys to hunt Dorothy and her friends. And so, the flying monkeys attacked Dorothy and her friends. One of them caught the Scarecrow and threw him on a tree. Another one threw the Tin Man over a cliff. They also tied up the lion to bring to the witch. Afterwards, all the flying monkeys turned to Dorothy. But once they saw the silver shoes on her feet, they did not want to hurt her. They just took her to the castle. When the Wicked Witch of the West saw the silver shoes on Dorothy's feet, she got really scared. But she also realised that Dorothy was not aware of the power of her shoes. Give those shoes to me! No, I won't! I said give it! The witch made a move towards Dorothy. Ah! How did you know that water is the only thing that can destroy me? Oh, I, I'm so sorry! she screamed, the witch melted away. Only her clothes remained on the floor. Dorothy first saved the lion from the cage he was kept. Then they together found Scarecrow and the Tin Man. They went back to the Emerald City 
told them that they got rid of the evil wicked witch of the West and wanted to see the Wizard of Oz. The mighty Wizard of Oz welcomed them all together this time. When they entered the throne room, they heard the deafening loud sound. I am the mighty Wizard of Oz. Why are you looking for me? Toto got so scared that he ran over the big separating screen in the corner. Behind the screen appeared a tiny, bold, old man. He was holding something resembling a horn in his hands. And who might you be? Uh, I'm the mighty Wizard of Oz. Are you the Wizard of Oz? But how can that be? The old man decided to explain his story. In reality, he was working in a circus. He used to make shows with the hot air balloon. One day, when a strong wind blew him to this castle, the people of the Emerald City thought that he was the wizard coming from the skies. And they asked him to rule the city. And so he agreed. And what about all your promises? The wizard told the Tin Man that he could give him a heart this instant. He reached behind and took out a stuffed heart toy from the chest. The Tin Man felt much better. Then he returned to the Scarecrow, he opened the stitches on his head and put in a handful of wheat and sewed it back up again. It was the scary lion's turn. He poured some potion from a gold bottle in a bowl and asked the lion to drink this potion of courage. The lion drank the potion. Suddenly, he left this weak, scared look and roared like the big, mighty lion he was. The Wizard of Oz smiled at them. He hadn't actually given them anything. All the things they had asked him, they had already had inside of them, but they did not know how to use it. Now it's your turn, Dorothy. You actually had everything you wished for right there with you all this time. If you tap your silver shoes to each other for three times, you will go wherever you wish for. So I could actually go home whenever I wanted? Yeah, but then I would be stuck on that field forever. And I was going to rust all by myself. And I would never become a courageous lion. Dorothy tightly hugged her friends. She said her farewells to each of them. Then she held Toto, and tapping her shoes three times, she said she wanted to go home next to her uncle and her aunt. After a short while, she found herself sitting in the garden. Excited, she looked around. She saw her uncle and her aunt running towards her. She laughed with joy. <laughs> Toto, look! We are home! 